This video is going to talk about one of the most famous forgers in the history of our trade, Mark Hoffman, otherwise known as the Mormon murderer. What happened basically was, in the 80s, Mark Hoffman, a dealer in manuscripts and other collectibles, came up with some fascinating documents having to do with the formation of the Mormon religion and the Mormon church. And these documents were so important that they became very, very valuable. And Mark Hoffman made a tremendous amount of money by buying and selling them. Unfortunately, most of the valuable ones were forgeries, which he created himself. When somebody was on his trail and he determined that his gig might have been up, what did he do? He killed them. The Mormon murders consisted of bombs that went off to cover his own trail and they were very sophisticated. Fortunately, perhaps for other future victims, the bomb went off in his car. Police initially thought that he was a victim of the Mormon murderer. They soon found out, no, he was the one who did it. Besides forging Mormon documents that had great value, he plied his trade on some other famous names in history. For example, Daniel Boone. Now, I would tell you to be very careful when you're out there buying a Daniel Boone because I'm pretty sure he made quite a few of these and I still see them on the market today. Here's a document purportedly signed by Joseph Smith and he was one of the Mormon founders and this would be an extremely valuable document. Again, a Hoffman forgery. Hoffman was a, was a brazen forger. Uh, not only would he try to forge a signature, which is easy and less likely to be caught, but he would forge entire letters. This one I'm fascinated by. You can see the exhibit number, 78. This was used in the trial. Here's a letter, a fully handwritten letter of Betsy Ross. Betsy Ross of American flag fame. This letter would probably be worth several hundred thousand dollars if it were real, but it isn't. It's a Mark Hoffman forgery. He employed various techniques of taking the letter and putting it in an oven and baking it to age it. He would put various dirt on the letter to make it look old. He had a lot of ways of making it look like something that came from antiquity. But one thing that the investigators discovered when they looked really closely at the letters, and you could see this with a high-powered magnifying glass, is something called alligator ink. That is that the ink cracked, and it might have been the heat that cracked the ink. But if you have something that you suspect is a Hoffman forgery and you look at it really closely, you could be very sure that it should be even of more suspicion if it has that alligator ink. Now, when Hoffman was getting close to being caught, as I said, what did he do? He wanted to cover his tracks and he actually killed a few people in that attempt. And this again was a police exhibit. You can see the exhibit number right here. And you can see Mark Hoffman's signature right here. And his signature is on the inside right here. When I'm holding this chemistry book, I can't imagine that he didn't hold this very book when he was thinking how he was gonna construct bombs to cover his tracks. Here's another book that he probably used as well, Civil War Explosion Ordinance. This was also in his possession when he was caught. I think one of the interesting things in the archive that I was able to purchase, take a look at the burn marks at the top and the bottom. These are the actual documents that were in Mark Hoffman's car when the bomb went off that he intended for someone else. Here's an example of a letter written by Mark Hoffman from prison. And in this letter, he talks about the various forgeries that he did in his career as a forger, including Emily Dickinson. There was a period where he was uh, very proactive in trying to write letters from prison to get the material that he forged off the market. And this is an interesting look at the writing of a genius and perhaps a madman. When you take a look at the writing, you start to think about it a little bit. I think it's really important not to glorify the forger, but I think it's also equally as important to understand the forger and the mindset of the forger. 
think how he thinks and you'll be able to decode his work. In this particular case, I spent a lot of time studying the work of Mark Hoffman, but you really do have to get inside the mind of the forger to really understand how he plied his trade.